Hello, everybody. Welcome to week five of Social Work 668. I've really enjoyed my conversations with many of you over the past week as you prepare for submitting your needs assessment, um, which is coming up, and a lot of questions around qualitative data analysis and qualitative data collection and your interview guide questions. So I'm just going to share my screen with you really quick to go through some additional um, data analysis strategies for the week. Okay, so let's begin. So today I'm going to take you through some more tips, tricks, and strategies for qualitative data analysis. So in the, our previous week, we really went over first cycle coding, and now we're going to go through second cycle coding strategies, which is really where you move from generating qualitative um, data analysis codes to thematic development, which is really the next stage, a more abstract way of thinking about our coding and qualitative data analysis. So this is really a continuation from last week. So just an FYI, our soft chalk lesson for week five is identical to the soft chalk lesson from week four. Um, and so I'm just gonna repost it so that you can refer back to it as you're writing your needs assessments, um, but there will be no points allocated in the week five version of week for soft chalk, if that makes sense. Um, I'm also going to schedule a synchronous session for this Sunday, September 26th from 7 to 8 p.m. I'm scheduling it that way intentionally. That seems to be the weekend seem to be best for our online students because a lot of you are working during the week. Um, I also wanted to be able to um, work with our international students because that might be the morning for you the next day you might be able to attend and um, the purpose of that session is to really answer any last minute questions that you have about the needs assessment assignment and to help prepare you for our next um, assignment which is our logic model so if you can make it to that session great if not i will record it and post it for you all and just because we do not have soft chalk point allocation for week five, our journal entry for participation points is going to be worth five points this week instead of three. So what is our journal assignment for this week? <clears throat> Excuse me. We are to identify at least three themes from the interviews. So in order to accomplish this task, you will need to review the recording of the interviews you conducted and either transcribe them or take notes. So using your transcript of your interview, apply techniques and strategies that you've learned from week four and week five to your qualitative data analysis to identify three major themes. So identify these themes and provide supporting documentation. So what does supporting documentation look like? Supporting documentation in the realm of qualitative data analysis is actual quotes. So that's how we ground our qualitative findings in data is by using direct quotes, our participants' very words. So I don't want you to duplicate and replicate work for this week. So I am perfectly happy if you replicate what you are doing in section four of your needs assessment, which is your themes section, to complete this section. No need to reinvent the wheel. I just want you to focus on doing things well and then maybe using some of my feedback to be able to then maybe refine your needs assessment or maybe it needs no refinement for this week. So don't feel like you need to rewrite section four in a different way to do your journal, it's perfectly fine if the two look like each other. My hope is that you'll be able to submit it a little bit earlier so I can give you some feedback if needed. Okay, so again, we are pulling from information from Johnny Saldana's 
textbook this week on coding manual for qualitative researchers and also Miles and Huberman's book on qualitative data analysis, which they have some features of um, data matrices, which I'm going to teach you about today. And again, no need to buy these books. This is just a reference point or supplemental information. So last week we focused on data reduction in the form of coding strategies. This week we're going to focus on step two and three, which is data displays and conclusion drawing and verification. So data display is really data reporting. So that links onto section four of your needs assessment, your themes section. And then conclusion drawing and verification the, that maps on to section five of your needs assessment, which is entitled findings, which is really where you report on implications for social work practice. Okay, so what do we do after first cycle coding? Um, this is step two, which is data display and creating data matrices. This is just one way to be able to organize your qualitative data and not the only way but I find it to be very helpful. So how do we use data matrices to summarize and analyze? They may help you as a program evaluator summarize and analyze your qualitative data in a table with rows and columns. So we're asking you to reach out and interview three participants. And this is a way that you can look at their data and compare and contrast your findings. So this allows for both cross case analysis as well as sorting data by theme. So our individual, I'm gonna show you a visualization of this in a minute, but individual cases are sorted by rows. We have participant A, participant B, and participant C. You can do this in a table in Word, or you can do it in an Excel spreadsheet. You're gonna, in the columns, you're gonna look at themes. So how do our themes cut across participant A, participant B, participant C. And at each intersecting cell, the source of information is summarized that relates to each intersecting case and theme. So here's an example. So you see we have Anna, Frederick, and Bernadette. As those are research participants one, two, and three. Across the rows in the columns, we have our themes. So based on our coding, this interviewer, this researcher, this program evaluator, I should say, uh, found um, a theme of experiences for volunteers, images of volunteers, and meanings of volunteers. So you can see that not only within the intersecting space did they report on a finding, but they also grounded it in data. So down here with question four, this right hand side is kind of a blow up of, okay, this is the meaning. This is really linked to other information, which is in the cell, which is, okay, this is an exemplar quote, which demonstrates the program evaluators meaning making or finding grounded in these data. Okay, so more elements of a data matrix. So that example I just showed you shows an application in summarizing and showing links between cases and themes. So your cases are our participants one, two, three. Our themes run across the top in our columns. So the rows are organized by case with row headers giving the cases name. So I want you to give your research participants or your program evaluation participants code names. I don't want you to use their real names because again, we are ensuring their confidentiality. That's a way of making sure we're gathering accurate information and not socially desirable information and data. Um, you can give some brief attributes of the case. So maybe position within the organization, maybe age, maybe years in the field, use whatever information you think is relevant. Sometimes people focus on gender identity, um, just some ideas. Columns contain our themes and that's the running head across the top. So I want you to think about some themes as you're organizing. So sometimes themes jump out at us as we're actually interviewing people. They're the things that we take notes on in our memos after an interview is concluded or during an interview. But I also want you to base your themes on your qualitative coding, which we focused on last week. 
the associated view number three, that was the part that was blown up on the right hand side of the screen, is a node containing references to coded sources of materials. So that's, that's our interview transcripts, our direct quotes, which we repro report in quotations in APA format that are linked to the summaries, which are in the matrix framework. Okay, so step three, so conclusion drawing and verification. This is how we organize our codes and potentially diagram. When I'm doing qualitative data analysis, I love to draw. I love to have a sketch pad next to me because I like to figure out this is how one thing affected the other. I like to look for cause and effect. I like to look for, you know, an experience and then a response. And that's always really helpful when trying to make meaning. So some other tips and tricks to find themes, I really like to do what's called code landscaping. I like to sexual identity, history, relationships, the things that aren't commonly, you know, used words, because this will only report frequency of words, so you might need to eliminate some from the cloud code or the code cloud. Um, you get to understand what the priorities are of your interview participants and what commonly used words they use. That's a great just starting place to think about your analysis. Code landscaping is great because sometimes this helps you being able to fit your codes into themes. So you can see the mega theme here is friendships, but within that, you see that the researcher looked at, you know, the social nature of friendships. And then from within that, tried to characterize that as interaction with people, human awareness and belonging, and then inserted codes related to that within. So this is a way you can kind of make a coding tree or what, as Johnny Saldana calls it, a coding landscape. So it definitely does not need to be organized like a tree. You can get very creative with this. Landscaped codes as the narrative outline. So that's where you could take your code landscape and then plug in your interview data or your direct quotes. So lifelong living and loving is a code from the coding landscape in the previous slide. And so now the researcher is going in and trying to define that code and then ground it in data, our participants' very words, our direct quotes. So in the example that I give you of a needs assessment from last year, the one thing that I would change is that student did not ground section four, their themes the section in data. And so I would like you to actually do that. I'd like you to use short quotes to explicate your findings so that you can explain your findings using your participants' very words. I've also in week five put some really cool data visualization tools for you and no need to do data visualization for this class, but it's just an FYI and for future reference. When you move into your positions within your organizations as social workers and you're asked to do program evaluation, it's great to have some data visualization tools. And this is called the qualitative chart chooser by Jennifer Lyons and Stephanie Evergreen. It's an attachment. I believe it's in the final step of week four's con sorry, week five's content. And just there is an FYI. It kind of gives you an example of what am I finding? Am I finding a hierarchy? Am I finding a flow? And I'm finding a comparison. And then it maps on to, oh, what visualization for thematic analysis might be helpful? Could it be a bubble chart? Could it be a heat map that look at, which looks at frequency of reporting themes? Could it be a Venn diagram? Just something to consider. And I've also put this as a link within our PowerPoint presentation for this week, as well to Stephanie Evergreen's website, which has a lot of cool and helpful tips and tricks for data visualization. So now what? This is also the part of reflexivity for us as program evaluators. What have I gotten right? Did I learn anything new? What's the big picture? What do I write about? 
So this now what section should map on to section five of your needs assessment, which is your implications for social work practice. So we want to think about our analytic outcomes. So you've Okay, I think I was kicked off the internet for a minute, but I am back. So I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, so where were we? You're we an analytic outcome. So I want to think about what could we include within our categories, themes, or assertions. So this could be perceptions of. This could be retention of, interventions of, limitations of, et cetera. Okay, just another FYI, I want you to know that we are not suggesting that you use what's known as CACTUS, Computer Assisted Qualitative Data Analysis and Software. I teach a PhD level course on that and that's not needed, but it's also good for you as researchers to know that these exist. There are many different types of qualitative data analysis software. Some are free, some are at a very expensive cost. So just know that they're out there and they are in existence if you want to use them in the future. So lastly, a few notes on rigor. And this is from Jerry R. Ryan, which is part of the RAND Corporation, which is a huge research think tank nationally and internationally. And I just love this idea of what is rigorous qualitative data analysis. So he says that we need to avoid confusing research rigor with concepts such as measurement, precision, quantification, and generalizability. These latter concepts are choices that must be made by each investigator in determining how to best meet their research objectives and not something that should be inherently desired into and of itself. Secondly, we need to be cautious about making claims that some data collection or analysis techniques are more rigorous than others. If techniques are tools in a researcher's toolbox, then this is like saying that a saw is better than a hammer because it is sharper. So we're going to next move later on in the semester into quantification, which is another set of tools in your toolbox. But it's important for you to also know what rigorous qualitative data met analysis methods look like, which usually looks like more than one cycle of coding. So our first cycle coding techniques our second cycle coding techniques. So next week is going to be a really busy week. We are going to get into logic models, which are really fun. This is when we're looking at the outcomes and the outputs of our program evaluation. And just a friendly reminder that our needs assessment is due September 27th at 11.59 p.m. So stay positive, work hard, and make it happen. I hope you're all hanging in there and reach out at any time if I can help you with anything. Thanks a lot.